Yo, yo, I'm Jerry Say Gaming, and welcome to the video. And before we start this review, though, um, can I rant about something just a little bit? Um, why the hell are we getting sequels to games that came out years ago? Why? <laughs> What I mean is that games that released years ago is coming back with a sequel, remake, remaster, so on, so forth. Example, The World Ends With You got a sequel 13 years later in the form of Neo, The World Ends With You. No More Heroes, Travis Strikes Again released 9 years after the release of the second game, with us getting No More Heroes 3 2 years after that. Battle for Bikini Bottom got a remake 18 years after the release of the original, and don't get me started with Kingdom Hearts 3 and the Resident Evil 2 remake, because while their development wasn't long, the idea of those games was. And with that said, guess how long we had to wait until we actually got a sequel to Psychonauts? 16 years. Yep. 16 whole ass years. Let's just get this review started because I'm already starting to feel old as it is. <laughs> Psychonauts 2 is a direct sequel to the 2005 original and released on the Xbox One, Xbox Series line of consoles, PS4, and PC on August 25th, 2021. Again, this game was developed by Double Fine, but this time the game was able to be made due to crowdfunding and later being acquired by Microsoft. Oh, guess what? Fun fact. Did you know that Marcus Pearson, the creator of Minecraft, was actually going to fund the sequel himself? Yeah, that's just how much people wanted the sequel. <laughs> a lot. Psychonauts 2 focuses on Raz having to stop the possible resurrection of a powerful villain named Maligula, as well as having to find a mole among the Psychonauts. Now, where the first Psychonauts was big in terms of gameplay, Psychonauts 2 takes it up a notch and makes the game feel massive, as well as introducing a bunch of improvements. Thanks to new technology, Psychonauts 2 feels like a lot of the ideas that could have been added in the first game has been added here, and this extends to new abilities that are amazing. Now, in terms of reception, so far the game has received universal acclaim from critics. And in terms of how fans is loving the game, yeah, yeah, this game is an absolute banger. And without further ado, let's get this review started. Again, I do apologize for this video taking so long to come out, but we're finally here. Let's get this bad boy started. But before that, we gotta talk about another elephant in the room, just like last time, the art design. Ah, a lot better. Instead of the art style that we had in the first Psychonauts, Psychonauts 2 instead opted for a cleaner art style, plus it does have a lot more vibrant color compared to the murkiness of the first game. Luckily, its most defining feature, i.e. the character designs, is still the same but remade in the modern sense. No more will we have to see characters with fucked up teeth and weird ass faces. It's a modern cartoon style that still retains the spirit of the original. You know what? Now I'm curious. Did one of the artists of Psychonauts go and do the art for No Straight Rose? Because these two look very similar. You know what, I, I'll look into that a little later. But enough with the character design, art design, all that stuff. Let's finally get on to the story of Psychonauts 2. Also, by the way, massive spoilers. Yes, I know this game came out a month ago now, but this is just for the people who haven't or have yet to play the game and stuff. So if you haven't played the game yet and you want to experience the story for yourself, I recommend you to just skip to like this time right here. If not, then if you want to be spoiled, that's fine. I'll wait a couple minutes. This right here, yep. Yeah. Alright. Well, if you guys are still here, then you guys want to be spoiled. And don't get on my ass for it. But let's go get this bad boy started, shall we? So, fun fact, before the release of the second game, there was a VR Psychonauts game released in 2017 called Rhombus of Ruin, which basically sets up the events of this game. Now, all you need to know is that Raz and the others saved Truman and captured Dr. Lobato. Cool? Cool? Let's continue on. Psychonauts 2 begins with Raz and the others exploring the mind of Dr. Lobato in order to find out who was responsible for kidnapping Truman Sonato. While in his brain, they learn that someone is threatening to hurt him if he reveals the identity of his kidnapper. While in his mind, Raz ends up having a vision of this game's big baddie, Maligula, a powerful psychic who was responsible for destroying the capital of Grulovia. Despite having been defeated, Sasha and Vodella finds out that someone is trying to revive Maligula, and to top it all off, there may be a double agent among the Psychonauts. When they reach the Mother Lowe, Raz meets Hollis, the second in command of the Psychonauts, and soon appoints him as an intern. He's joined by other interns that include Sam Bull, Adam Gett, Morris Martinez, Gisu, Norma, and Lizzie who pretty much are assholes to Raz. Raz tries to prove himself to be a capable member of the Second Nuts, yet he ends up in a series of shenanigans that results in Hollis's mind getting fucked up. He manages to recover her mind, and after getting a massive lesson from her and eventually Sasha, Hollis lets him join the mission to find the evidence of the mole. 
Towards the end of the mission, Raz ends up in a room where he eventually finds a piece of paper that might suggest that Lily is the mole. Back in HQ, Raz shows Lily the paper with her running off in disbelief. But before leaving, Raz is stopped by Truman Zanato, who tasks Raz with bringing back Ford Queller in order to fight off against Maligula. And this pretty much sums up the first half of the game, and in terms of the story, yeah, it's bigger in scale than the original, with Maligula the big baddie truly feeling like a major threat compared to Oleander. But from this point on, the story takes a massive backseat as when Raz brings Ford Queller to the Mother Lobe, we're basically tasked with fixing his brain, and in order to do so, we meet the members of the Psychic Six, who were the founders of the Psychonauts and also had defeated Maligula before. Or at least at first some of the members. Issues that are, um, let's just say... It's time for... What, audience? Too many colors! Don't panic. <laughs> you said panic! Fucking weird. After helping out the two members of the Psychic Six and going through Quiller's mind and fixing it, Quiller ends up laying a massive bomb cell on Raz. But before we do that though, let me introduce y'all to Raz's family real quick. I'm sorry, I had no idea where I was going to include this. Prior to Raz starting his mission to fix Quiller's mind, Raz's family comes to see him, with us meeting everyone from Raz's mom, to his sibling, and to his grandma. Speaking of his grandma, guess what? Ford Quiller tells Raz that Grandma Nuna is actually Maligula. The fuck? Uh, well, not exactly. Please. Explain yourself. <laughs> okay, 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 I got you, I got you, I got you. Maligula herself used to be Lucrecia Lucy Mux, who was the unknown seventh member of the Psychic Six. Raz's real grandmother was killed in Maligula's attack on Golovia, and in order to attempt to save Lucy, Quiller hid Maligula deep within her psyche as well as making her believe she was Raz's grandmother. After this bombshell and bringing back the remaining two members of the Psychic Six, Quiller devises a plan to destroy Maligula once and for all by having Lucy recollect her memories using the Astral Laugh. The Astral Laugh? Yeah, the Astral Laugh. Raz and Quiller dives inside Lucy's mind, but they soon find out that she had already recollected her memories herself. During this, we also find out that she was the one responsible for convincing Raz to go to Whispering Rock as a plea for help. And just as Raz is about to get rid of Maligula's personality, Truman pulls Raz out and begins to tinker with the machine that is holding you on the end. Raz and Lily, suspicious about Truman's actions, ends up going inside his brain only to find out that Truman's body has been taken over by the Prince of Golovia, Gristel Malik, who plied to get revenge from the Psychonauts after his family got ran out of Golovia. Raz and Lily manages to stop him, but they're too late as Maligula has been revived. Raz returns to his family, where his dad has regained his memories about Nona, and soon they help Raz get into Maligula's mind. Raz battles Maligula, and with the help of Nona and the other interns, they manage to destroy her once and for all. After everything is said and done, Truman Zanotto regains his brain, Nona is returned to Raz's family and is pardoned by the Psychonauts, Malik is sent to a psycho-isolation chamber to pay for his crime, and Raz and the other interns are promoted to junior agents. Jesus Christ. Okay, this story is bigger in scale in so many ways. Not just narrative-wise, but world-building. This, oh, you know what? For the sake of convenience, I'm going to attempt to condense this. Attempt, mind you. Okay, so first of all, this story does a lot of world-building. Before, we only knew of Whispering Rock and the asylum near the camp. But now, not only do we have the Mother Lobe, but we also have Grilovia, Green Needle Gulch, and so much more that has so many eccentric details about them. Second thing, the comedy in this game is even better than in the first game. The self-aware and sarcastic humor from the first game is here, but now it has some wacky elements that I know for me made me laugh my ass off. Sam Bull is one of the best examples of the game's comedy. Every scene sees end, she either does something out of pocket or will say something you'll never expect. And man, that shit makes for some funny moments like this. Where'd you learn how to make pancakes? Prison. What the fuck? Speaking of characters, I want to go and talk about Raz real quick. So, for the most part, Raz is still the same as he was before, but this time he feels a lot more timid and less confident compared to the first game. This isn't a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing because we see Raz grow as a character. From the moment he gets appointed as an intern towards the end of the game, we see him go through new challenges that causes that change. Other than that though, the only thing that I have an issue with with this story is that I feel like the story could have a better climax, especially towards the end when Raz finds the mole. But hey, that might just be a me issue. But anyway, though, let's transition onto the gameplay. And a little something before we start, I know I neglected to mention some of the other issues in the Psychonauts video, mainly because I wanted to wait to play this game to better just, you know, see all the issues and how they were fixed. And to that, I actually want to say something very controversial. Well, not controversial, but something that, um, I don't know, it may be controversial, but uh, 
What is it exactly? Sucking Nuts 2 is as good, if not a little better than Super Mario Odyssey. Allow me to explain. <laughs> Everything introduced See in the that first game is done again, that? but greatly improved to be more enjoyable. The platforming is a notable change as Raz feels a lot faster and lighter to control. He has all his acrobatic abilities like being able to climb things, double jump, and swing from bar to bar. But now he can do wall jumps and a dive kick after jumping in the air. Many of his second abilities also returned from the first game but was also greatly approved on. Telekinesis, once a finicky ability to use now feels easier and quicker to utilize. Pyrokinesis, one of the most underutilized and slow abilities is now both quicker to use and has more uses to it. The side blast now doesn't have an ammo count and can be used on a cooldown. Clairvoyance, while still the same in some ways, has improved animation and usage. And while the levitation ball isn't as broken as it was in the first game, it's now faster and has some punch to it. Kind of see the trend going on here? A lot of the returning abilities are approved to the point in which you'll use it throughout the whole entire game. And this goes even further with the removal of situational abilities like the shield, invisibility, and confusing grenades. In return, we get three new abilities which are both very fun to use and interesting as well. The first new ability is Mental Connection, which put Raz in the dot bubble and is used to grapple onto dots and connect ideals together. The second ability is Time Bubble, which allows you to slow down time. And the final ability is Mental Projection, which you can draw up an archetype to battle and solve puzzles for you. Also, this Mental Projection has the same voice as Gur from Invader Zen. Yep, it's official. Psychonauts 2 is just a front for Invader Zen the video game. <laughs> Compared to before, these abilities have more usage. What is the word of the day, folks? Because these abilities aren't situational and can be used to discover secrets, or it can be used in this game's improved combat. The combat in Psychonauts 2 feels a lot faster and more responsive than its predecessor. The lock-on system returns, but instead of having you hold down a button, you can tap the analog stick in order to lock on the enemies and switch targets on the fly. Plus, your evasive maneuvers are quicker and not bound to locking on the targets. There's also a more variety of enemies that either have a specific way of killing them or can be killed with any ability. This is cool, but sometimes can be frantic as in any stage that you're in, you may have to face a gauntlet of enemies and they can be pretty stressful to deal with, especially in the late game. The collected on elements from the first game return and damn, these were drastically improved. In the first game, it's hard to 100% complete it as most of the mental figments are borderline invisible and there were no way to keep track of how many there were per stage. This is where the second game comes in and greatly fixes those issues as well as adding new items to collect as well. A lot of these new items contribute to your side rank which is a lot easier to gain this time around. Oh, and the best part is that whenever you gain a new side rank, you can get skill points to further develop that particular ability. For example, you can upgrade your side blast to charge up and shoot at enemies to lay down some extra pain, and you can also upgrade your melee combat for extra combos. Besides collecting mental figments, brains, challenge markers, and combining side cards and side cores together, Raz can do side missions and what's after completion increases Raz's side rank. I'm iffy on these though because some of the side missions are abstract as fuck and you won't know where to go unless you're using the guide. And finally, the shop which got a giant facelift. Raz could buy items from auto using Citanium, which you can find throughout the game. You can buy side pops, side cores, etc. But you can also get patches which enhances your ability and can let you do dumb shit like this. <laughs> Later on in the game, Otto can give you his gadgets, which can be used to find mental dots and also find more titanium. Which, while similar to the Cowweb Duster and the Dowsing Rod, it's not exactly needed to complete the game. Oh, and by the way, guess what? There's more. There's more to talk about. Jesus Christ. So yeah, um, this game is big as hell. Like, I mean, there is so much to talk about. Because not it's like we just talked about the gameplay, which okay, it has its own set of stuff, cool. But the levels themselves and the hub worlds, there's a lot. This is gonna be very hard to talk about. <laughs> so, in an effort to hopefully try to condense this so this video isn't long as hell, I am going to attempt to speed run talk about all the levels, hub worlds, and so on and so forth. I am going to attempt to do this. I don't know how it's going to work. 
I may fail horribly. In Psychonauts 2, there's four, and yes, I mean four different hub worlds you can explore in. The first spot is the Mother Lobe, which has stuff to do and is a lot more tamed than the second spot, which is the Quarry. This part of the hub world has a lot of platforming challenges, but it does not compare to the third spot and the biggest spot actually, the questionable area, which looks a lot like Whispering Rock and has so much shit to do. It is a literal platforming paradise and it has a bunch of secrets that can't even be unlocked till the late game. And finally, you have the fourth spot, which is the Green Needle Gulch. And long story short, it's not full of platforming challenges and it is tamed as the Brother Lobe, if not a lot more tamed. So, compared to Psychonauts 1, there's actually now 13 levels. And that may not sound a lot, especially, you know, in today's gaming world, but that, it's a lot, especially with how big these worlds are, too. But yeah, let's go and just get into the levels themselves, shall we? Damn. Well, um, that took a while, but we're finally here. So, uh, well, let's get this level started, shall we? Most levels, like in the first the game, Sinatos has a set of objectives to there. meet any boss to defeat. But the majority of missions in this game will have an objective to simply complete. Like in the three Queller levels, you have to make it to the top of Ford's brain in order to recover a piece of his mind. Now, the Psychic 6 levels, which has you going into the minds of Cobden Bull, Helmet Full Bear, Cassiopeia, and Bob Zanato each have their own interesting gimmicks. Like, in Helmet Full Bear's level, is literally going through a Beatles like world, which can be trippy as hell. Or in Compton Bull's level, which is a cooking show. But unfortunately, I don't have the footage because it was all corrupted. So here's a look into the boss. Jeff seems to be holding it together in the isolation station. I'm sorry you had to see that. I'm very sorry. Other than that though, these levels are pretty long and expansive, but can also go by pretty quickly. The early missions, and for that matter, any level that gives you a new ability does a really great job at using the level to explain how the ability works. And one thing that I am pleased to say is that this game doesn't have a single bullshit level like in the Meek Circus. Even on the music from it plays in the first part of the Lucy's level, Double Fine, are you trying to spite me? God damn it! Uh, oh wait, there's other bosses too. There's only five major bosses in this game, but the majority of the other bosses are simply mini bosses to introduce new enemies. So, that pretty much covers the game, so what are my thoughts about it? Psychonauts 2 is a game that I would consider to be a near perfect game. It takes every good and bad element of the first Psychonauts and greatly improves on it. Everything about the game is faster, Raz not only feels lighter and faster to use, but he's also not as floaty as in the first game. The abilities are all useful and none of them feel underutilized. The graphics are clean as fuck and looks really good thanks to the Unreal Engine 4. The music is a little bit more memorable but nothing too crazy. Uh, hi, uh, Editor Snow here, um, by the way, you might be seeing me using this, but anyway, anyway, no. Editor Snow, originally I said that, hey, the music was not that memorable, nothing too special, but I kinda lied. Psychonauts 2's music is really fucking good. I love it. Double fine, please release a vinyl disc, please. Cause this shit fucking slaps. Okay, cool, back to the video. The collectibles are easier to obtain and it's a lot more clear on how to find your next destination. And finally, man, the game feels like a big playground when you're not advancing the story. But that does lead me to a couple issues that I had with this game. One major issue is the load times. If you're playing this game on the Xbox One or PS4, be prepared to wait a long while as you may be waiting upwards to a minute and 30 seconds for the game to load. Other than that though, the other issues is that this game's ending felt anticlimactic. Like it like it feels as if the final act is trying to lead to something more, but it just stops afterwards. But despite the issues that I have with this game and the game's story, I still would consider this game to be a near perfect game and especially a great and damn near perfect sequel. Okay, and on to the verdict. So, should you play Psychonauts 2? Long story short, yes, you should play Psychonauts 2, but here's some things to consider if you're trying to figure out which version to play. If you love the first game, then the second game will definitely hit you in the sweet spot, but make sure to play on newer consoles or on a really good PC so you don't have to wait on those long ass load times.
And with that, thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. Again, I do apologize for how long this video took to come out. Um, you know, school and shit. Yeah, <laughs> we're managing so far, we're managing. So pretty much the next video that we are going to be doing is going to be going back to Zelda temporarily. But um, I'm not doing the Oracle games. Instead, I'm just doing Link, uh, Link's Awakening and that's it. And I'll go more detail when we get to the video itself. Um, but yeah, but make sure to like and subscribe, all that good stuff, and stay safe and stay vibing, my guys. See you guys in the next video. Yeah.